I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to another installment of What You Never Knew. This is where we take a look at all the little touches, not behind the scenes of a movie, but right in front of us. And today, we're gonna take a gander at Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Sure, it's an awesome movie and it has some of history's most famous cartoon characters, but have you ever noticed all the tiny things in the background? The subtle touches, the graceful nods, the itty bitties you never noticed unless you watched the movie a million times? Like, I have? Eh. Well, those hours of watching have added up to this video, pointing out the many Easter eggs this movie has hidden right in front of us. There's a great ton of them, and there's no time to lose. Let's take a look at Roger Rabbit. We all know Bob Hoskins and Christopher Lloyd, but there's a few other people you may recognize that act in this film. For example, the Dip Shoe was voiced by Bart Simpson star Nancy Cartwright. The voice of Droopy on the elevator is done by the film's animation director, Richard Williams. Have a good day, sir. And how about Lieutenant Santino? Does his condescending attitude ring any bells to you? Gee whiz, Eddie, if you needed money so bad, why didn't you come to me? Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. That's right. He was the guy who got choked into being Vader's bitch in Star Wars. Don't feel too bad. I knew another lieutenant who didn't turn out so great in Star Wars either. <laughs> While most of us know an uncredited Kathleen Turner voiced Jessica Rabbit, the singing voice was done by producer Steven Spielberg's then-wife, Amy Irving. On top of that, you'll notice that half the dialogue that Donald speaks is taken from the original cartoons where he was voiced by Clarence Charles, and the other audio being the new dialogue was voiced by his replacement, Tony Aselmo. Does anybody understand what this duck is saying? The oven in the intro may look like a foreign company, but you ever try reading it out loud? If you do, it would sound like hotter in hell. Yeah, I know, but let's face it, they've had worse innuendos in this movie. Nice movie, Trent. The book the film was based on, who censored Roger Rabbit, was actually an allegory to racism against African Americans in the 40s. And while a lot of it's played down in the film, the hints and clues are still there. The Ink and Paint Club, for example, where tunes go to perform and serve yet aren't allowed to watch, is a satire of a similar establishment called the Cotton Club. The red car being bought out to make a freeway was based on a real plan to tear down poor neighborhoods to sell more automobiles. You see how important the red car is in this time period by the map that's in the bar, and you see the plan being put into place with an ad right next to Toontown advertising Cloverleaf Homes. Eddie is also overcoming a prejudice that Roger's dialogue suggests is becoming more and more common. You know there's no justice for tunes anymore! Laugh can be a very powerful thing. Why, sometimes in life, it's the only weapon we have! Roger even subtly stands on a soapbox when making a speech about surviving injustice. Clever. This is one of the few times in history you've seen Mickey Mouse with Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck with Daffy Duck. But have you ever noticed they're never on screen alone? They're always side by side. That's because Warner Brothers made an arrangement that their top stars, Bugs and Daffy, get just as much screen time as Disney's top stars, Mickey and Donald. In fact, only 10 characters in the entire film are not copyrighted by Disney. That's one of the reasons Toontown is primarily filled with Disney characters. No wonder they were constantly fighting all the time. <laughs> A lot of us pick up Judge Doom's rubbery face, teeth, and exaggerated stilted movements, indicating that he's an evil tune in disguise. But have you ever noticed another clue most evil cartoon characters had back then that he constantly has? There's almost always a gust of wind blowing his cape back. Yep, even indoors, somehow that little cape always keeps blowing sinisterly backwards. Subtle. Don't you appreciate the magnitude of that? There's a few references younger audiences might not get, but are definitely products of the time. When Roger cuffs Eddie, he's doing an impression of popular comic strip Dick Tracy. Eddie Valiant? And remember Angelo's imaginary friend when Doom is looking for Roger? Say hello! Uh, That's a reference to a popular Jimmy Stewart movie about a man who sees an imaginary rabbit. The owner of Maroon Cartoons is also a satire of an insult that was thrown around quite a bit back then. What a Maroon. And remember this line? And how about those Brooklyn Dodgers? Are they bombs or what? That's foreshadowing that the Brooklyn Dodgers would eventually move to California and become the LA Dodgers. Meaning those bums he was complaining about, he'd soon be rooting for in the future. This is no way to make a living. Does Roger have the force? Because he lifted that coat up before even touching it. 
If you ever wonder why Eddie is taking a shower in the middle of the day, it's to wipe away a torture device that Judge Doom put on Eddie in a deleted scene. Well, not torture, but more humiliation. You can see more of that scene in the Special Edition DVD. What you can't see in the Special Edition DVD is a controversial couple of frames where Jessica is thrown out of the car and reveals that she went commando under that dress. That's right, it's not even a second long, but she flashes the camera out and open. This was caught on VHS and removed when the DVD was released. Fair enough, but how come that wind in Lion King still says sex? Mm. <laughs> sure it is. That wonderful shot of Eddie's desk presents a history of him and his brother being jokesters, showing that a lot of the background pictures in this film show a much more completed story. For example, Eddie's backflips and juggling are suggested by his father and his brother being in the circus. We also see Betty Boop is the only tune he seems to have nostalgic respect for, and thus it's the only piece of tune merchandise he keeps in his office. But I still got it, Eddie! Yeah, you still got it. While all the cartoons were of course animated, there were one or two shots that were too quick or too dangerous to perform with human actors. This meant that Hoskins himself had to be animated for a couple of shots. Weird. I don't know who's told you. When Doom looks at the merry-go-round broke down, a record that Roger was playing earlier, he deems it quite, quite a loony a selection for a group of drunken reprobates. This is very fitting, seeing how the merry-go-round broke down is the main theme for the Looney Tunes shorts. My buddy Betty D, a sour puss you'll see. Now, how he could tell he was there by smelling it, that's just odd. I don't get it. Of course not. You lack vision. Do you need a permit for escape-proof tune rope? Use that escape-proof tune rope! I mean, don't get me wrong, I know why they use it, as we clearly see Roger can slip out of any bindings, but the term escape-proof tune rope would indicate it would only be needed to restrain or hang someone. In fact, Jessica has a few strands around her neck and somehow miraculously doesn't seem to choke. This is a pretty fucked up product the more I think about it. That's what I call one seriously disturbed tune. And the number one thing you never knew about Roger Rabbit is pretty much everything in the background of Toontown. Okay, so there's way too many signs and little touches all throughout this scene, and I doubt I can name all of them in such a short video. So here's just a quick sum up of the best of them. The movie theater indicates they change their shorts daily. The first popular cartoon series, Felix the Cat, is on top of the Toontown tunnel, proving that it does in fact have a very long history. The shadows of both the Roadrunner and Coyote are seen in the elevator, indicating they're searching for one another throughout the building. The Jessica imposter has a shoe tree outside her door. I don't like what that's indicating. Everything in Toontown has a happy face, even the clouds. Creepy. Eddie's tune gun was given to him by Yosemite Sam, who apparently did time. I can't imagine for what. And my absolute favorite out of all of them, oh hell, just read it. That is fucking hilarious. And one of the many little touches that makes Roger Rabbit an absolutely awesome movie. Are there any more that you noticed? Are there any other little touches we're talking about? Well, leave them in the comments below and keep talking about a movie that's definitely worth talking about. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to.